Welcome back to pattern recognition. So today we want to look into a more simple classification method that is called the naive base classifier. So the naive base classifier takes a quite a few simplifying assumptions. Still, it's widely and successfully used and it often also outperforms much more advanced classifiers. It can be appropriate in the presence of high dimensional features. So if you have really high dimensions because of the curse of dimensionality and the sparsity of training observations, it may make sense to simplify your model with naive base. Sometimes it's even called idiot space. So let's look into the problem that it tries to tackle. So typically from the class dependent probability density function, we can do the following factorization. So you see we have our observations x and if they are class dependent, and then we can rewrite the vector x in its components. So we have the observations x1 to xd and they are all given the class y. Now I can factorize this further, so which means that I can compute the class conditional probability for x1 and then I still need to multiply with the respected other probabilities and you can see that I can apply the same trick again. So then I see that x2 is going to be dependent on y and x1 and we can write this up into the following product here. So you see how we start building this on top and you see that we have all the different interdependencies and this is essentially nothing else than constructing a full covariance matrix here if you consider for example the Gaussian case. So what do we do in naive base? Well naive base makes a very strong assumption and it assumes naively the independency of the dimensions. So all d components of the feature vector x are assumed to be mutually independent. And this then means that we can rewrite the actual class conditional probability for x as simply the product over the individual dimensions of x. And if we now apply this in base rule, then you see that we still want to maximize our posterior probability with respect to y. And now we apply base rule. We've seen that we can get rid of the prior of x because in the maximization of y we are independent of x. So this part is not considered here. And then we can see that we essentially can break this down to the prior of y times the component wise class conditional probabilities. So this is a fairly simple assumption. And why would we want to do that? Well, let's go back to our Gaussian. And if we now describe a 100 dimensional feature vector x that lives in a 100 dimensional space, then if you belong to class y, and this is normally distributed in all components that are mutually dependent, you can see that we need a mean vector with a dimensionality of 100 and we need a covariance matrix of a dimensionality of 100 times 100. So this is fairly big. You can then even simplify this a little bit further because our covariance matrix actually doesn't have complete degrees of freedoms, but we actually have a triangular matrix because some of these components have to appear again. And this means that we have essentially 100 unknowns in the mean vector and 100 
times 100 plus 1 over 2 and this gives a total number of unknowns of 5150. Now let's assume that they are mutually independent. This means that we still need to have a mean vector with 100 components, but we can break down our covariance matrix now and we see that we only have to estimate a single variance for every component of the vector. So this is then a much simpler version and this brings us then down that we only have 100 plus 100 unknowns that need to be estimated. And this reflects to quite a bit of reduction in terms of parameters. So in this plot we are actually showing the number of parameters on the y-axis and the dimension of the feature vector on the x-axis. And you can see here that with naive base, of course, this is a linear relationship, while in a Gaussian with full covariance, we have something that is growing at a quadratic rate. Let's look into the example and the effect of the modeling. Here you see this example with two Gaussian distributions and they are both now using a full covariance matrix. If I break this down, you can see here our decision boundary in black. Now, if we use the naive base, it breaks down to the following decision boundary. So you can see it's, it's more coarse. It's not such a great fit, but it still does the trick. And you can see as well that the estimated covariance parameters are also much simpler because it's only two parameters per distribution. Also, we can consider the logit transform. So you remember, if we want to look at the decision boundary, then we take the posterior probabilities and divide them by each other and take the logarithm. And we can, of course, reformulate this with the base rule. And this allows us then to split this fraction into two terms where we essentially have the prior on the left hand side and the class conditionals on the right hand side. And now we use this trick of naive base and we see that we can reformulate the class conditionals into products of the individual dimensions. And this is a product that then also can be essentially used together with the logarithm and it can be converted into a sum. So essentially you can see from this decision boundary here that we have something that is called a generalized additive model. So we can formulate the decision boundary here in terms of this generalized additive model. And this is essentially nothing else than the respective individual dimensions formulated in this sum here. So is there anything between Bayes and naive Bayes? And the answer is, of course, yes. So there are multiple techniques that try to beat the curse of dimensionality. And for example, you can reduce the parameter space as we did just with naive Bayes. But of course, we don't have to assume complete independency. So we can maybe only use a weak independency in contrast to complete mutual dependency or complete mutual independency. So this is one thing that you can do. And we will look into an example on the next slide, actually. And the other thing is, of course, parameter tying. And this can both help you to reduce the dimensionality of the parameter space. And of course, there's also other approaches like the reduction of the dimensionality of the feature vectors. And this brings us then to the domain of feature transforms. So let's look at the ideas that we can do. So you remember that we can write our class conditional probability in the following way. And now let's introduce a first order dependency. So we start expanding here again and again. And now we want to have a first order dependency, which then means that we can write this up as the product. And we always have a dependency of the respective dimension and the neighboring dimension. So it's not 
completely dependent but only dependent to the neighboring dimension and if we apply this again then to a gaussian then you can see that we essentially come up with a covariance matrix that has this banded structure so we have the diagonal as we would have in the naive base but we also have essentially one element of the diagonal that is also estimated so we have a slight kind of introduction of mutual dependence that we can model with this first order dependency. Another trick that we can use in order to reduce the parameters is to introduce tied parameters and here for example we can say that all of the diagonal elements have to be the same parameter and then we introduce just a single sigma on the complete diagonal. So this would be one idea of parameter tying in order to further reduce the number of unknowns. Yeah, so what are the lessons that we have learned here with Naive Bayes? Naive Bayes is rather successful, so it's being used quite a bit and it's, it's actually not such a bad idea. It does not require a huge set of training data because we have actually quite few parameters and these fewer parameters can be estimated then also with fewer observations. And somehow we have to trade off the statistical dependency that we want to model in contrast to the dimensionality of the search space. So if we do things like that, then we can essentially trade the complexity of the model versus the actual number of the observations. So this is sometimes even a very good compromise. And I can just tell you, if you have few observations, then you may want to give naive base actually a try. Well, in the next lecture, we want to look into the other way of simplification, and that is essentially dimensionality reduction. And we want to look into something that is called discriminant analysis and the most popular one is the linear discriminant analysis and you if you attended introduction to pattern recognition you've already seen the linear discriminant analysis and we want to explore this idea a little bit further in the next couple of videos i do have a little bit of further readings for you as well so there's of course pattern recognition and neural networks where this topic is elaborated on and also in Bishop's book Pattern Recognition and Machine Learning you can find further information about this topic. Again I have a couple of comprehensive questions that may help you in preparation of the exam and this already brings us to the end of today's video so I hope you find this small excursion to the naive base classifier quite useful and you could see that we can use a couple of tricks by introducing independence in order to reduce the number of parameters and in order to simplify our estimation problems. So thank you very much for listening and looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye bye.